Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, let us discuss about production of vaccines. Vaccines are produced by gene techniques using or preferring rDNA technology where a single selected gene will be inserted into the vector and that particular vector will be implanted into the host cell for the production of the vaccines. So before entering into this topic, I recommend you people to watch my previous video on this rDNA technology. So brief introduction and the explanation has been given on this rDNA technology. So once if you prefer that video such that you can understand this production of the vaccines. Okay, so uh, what does this definition means? Vaccines are produced by gene techniques. Gene techniques is nothing but by using this rDNA technology. So by using this rDNA technology, normally a single selected gene, normally a gene will be selected from a particular type of virus and that gene will be isolated and it will get inserted into the vector. Vector is nothing but the plasmid which will be chosen. And once this selected gene will get inserted into this vector and that particular vector is called as a recombinant vector and that particular recombinant vector will be implanted into the host cells and now that host cells will be cultured and it will be under and it will be placed in the fermentation tank for the production of the vaccines so this is what the procedure of the production of these vaccines so this is just a small sentence which is given which has been given for you people and brief explanation of this production of vaccines will be given for you now <coughs> so i have said you that here these vectors are nothing but the plasmids which will uh, implanted into the host cell right so what are these host cells host cells can be included like e coli cells as well as the yeast cells but mostly preferred host cells for the production of the vaccines are yeast cells yeast cells are most widely used and one of the most important sentence which you people have to remember uh, on these vaccines are usually a vaccine consists of a biological agent that represents the disease causing microorganisms so what does this sentence mean See, I am going to explain you sentence. I am going to explain you this sentence at the end of this video because firstly you have to know the protocol of production of these vaccines. And once if I explain you the protocol of the production of these vaccines, then you can understand this definition by yourself. So I am going to explain you this definition later. So now coming to the protocol. Firstly, let us discuss about the protocol of the production of the vaccines. <coughs> right? So we know that the vaccines are mainly produced from the gene which has been isolated from the virus right so here the virus which i have chosen for the better explanation is hepatitis b virus normally this hepatitis b virus can be extracted from the patient who is suffering with hepatitis right and here here the virus which i have chosen is hepatitis b virus so the vaccine which will be produced is called as hepatitis b vaccine right because here the virus which we have chosen is hepatitis b virus that particular type of vaccine only will be produced right for example if you take any other virus and that particular vaccine of that virus will all be produced but not another type of virus right so here i have chosen hepatitis b virus we know that in any every type of virus there is a presence of the genetic material genetic makeup or as any uh, what genome and that genome may be either dna or as rna right and from this genetic material you have to obtain hepatitis b antigen producing gene so this plays a major and vital role for the production of the vaccines so hb antigen producing gene is nothing but hepatitis b antigen producing gene which is a small strand which is mainly obtained from this genetic material of hepatitis b virus right and now we have to keep this hb antigen producing gene apart you have to keep it aside and on the other hand what you are going to do is that you are going to take one of the bacteria and we know that the bacteria consists of the plasmid as well as the bacterial DNA. So you can leave this bacterial DNA and you have to isolate this plasmid which is present in this. And once you isolate this plasmid from this bacterial cell then what you are going to do is that you are going to add the restriction endonuclease enzyme. So what is the main function of this restriction endonuclease enzyme? This restriction endonuclease enzyme cleaves the plasmid at a particular restriction site such that that strand will get eliminated the particular site will get eliminated in such a way that that particular position will be empty and once that position is empty which has been done by this restriction under nucleus once the position has been empty then what you are going to do you are going to add this hb antigen producing gene you are into this plasmid so what is the enzyme which is mainly required to attach this hb antigen producing gene to this plasmid vector dna ligase DNA ligase is the most most important enzyme which is mainly used to attach this HB antigen producing gene to this plasmid vector. Okay. So now 
here the hb antigen producing gene has been attached to this sorry what this plasmid vector and then now that vector is called as a recombinant vector so why it is called as recombinant vector because we have recombined we have combined this hb antigen producing gene to this plasmid which is also called as a vector right hence it is called as recombinant vector now right and now what you are going to do with this recombinant vector now you have to take a host cell so what are the type of host cells which you can take e coli as well as the yeast cell but here i am for example i am going to take a yeast cell because normally uh, highly used host cells for the production of the vaccines are yeast i have said you right so here yeah, let us take this is a yeast cell right and make sure that the yeast cell which you have chosen doesn't consist of any plasmid dna right and you have to choose the type of yeast cells and now as the plasmid is not present in that yeast cell then what you are going to do you are going to inject this recombinant vector plasmid into this particular type of yeast cell right and how you are going to inject this into this uh, recombinant vector sorry into this what we said this recombinant uh, vector how you can inject this recombinant vector into this yeast cell by using two methods like micro injection method or as electroporation method the electroporation method i already explained in my previous video the link will be given in the description box you can watch that video such that you can understand how this recombinant vector can be inserted into this host cells or as type of yeast cells and the micro injection method will be explained in further videos and now here in this yeast cell the recombinant vector or the recombinant plasmid has been inserted by using this techniques so now this yeast cell is called as recombinant yeast cell because it consists of a recombinant vector or a recombinant plasmid right and now what you are going to do in the next step now here recombinant vector has been placed into this uh, yeast cell such that it forms a recombinant yeast cells and now this recombinant yeast cell will be placed in the fermentation tank right and the total process of the fermentation tank i already said you where it consists of the blades and once you insert the nutrient medium into this fermentation tank then what will happen this recombinant yeast cells will use as that particular nutrient medium either it may be liquid form or as any type of gel like structures it utilizes that nutrient medium in such a way that it undergoes proliferation proliferation means what that's nothing but the cell division process all of this recombinant yeast cells will undergo cell division in such a way that the number of these cells will get increased in the fermentation tank itself so what is the main aim of the fermentation to convert the primary metabolite into the secondary metabolites so here what will happen the secondary metabolites which will be obtained is nothing but the vaccines right so in the fermentation tank all of this recombinant yeast cells will be placed and here the number of cells will get increased by the cell proliferation proliferation technique right and now this fermentation tank will uh, you are going to open the tap of this fermentation tank in such a way that all of this mixed uh, mixture will be uh, it will be what protruded out and now you are going to collect that all of this uh, mixture and now you are going to filter it and after filtration you are going to do purification and now after purification you are going to obtain you are going to obtain hepatitis b vaccine and this hepatitis b vaccine is also called as hb vaccine right so this is the method how the vaccines will be produced so here hb vaccine has been produced why because the virus which we have chosen for this uh, production of this vaccines is hepatitis b virus right for example if you take any other virus like hepatitis a virus then particular type of vaccine will be produced right but for hiv virus the particular type of vaccine was not yet produced the same method has been done for the production of the vaccine for hiv but it was failed that vaccine has not been worked for the human beings right and now this vaccine which has been produced will be injected into the patient who is suffering with hepatitis b virus hepatitis okay so that person will be cured from this hepatitis b virus where this virus will get killed so now i have said you that there is a definition which is very much important i am going to explain you later i have said you right so now coming to this definition usually a vaccine consists of a biological agent that represents the disease causing microorganisms so here the particular type of virus will forms a particular type of vaccine right so now this vaccine consists of a gene which is mainly obtained from this particular type of virus which you have chosen only for example this hepatitis b vaccine consists of a gene from this hepatitis b virus only right so that's what i have mentioned here 
a vaccine consists of a biological agent that represents the disease that biological agent is nothing but the particular type of gene so what is the gene hb antigen producing gene this is the one and only one most important gene which is highly responsible for the production of the vaccine and it mainly helps in the curing of that particular type of virus which is present in the patient right so that's what we have mentioned here so this is about the production of vaccines and the notes on this topic will be given in the whatsapp group and the link of that whatsapp group will be given in the description box so by using that link you can join us in the whatsapp group and if you like my video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video you can comment in the comment box thank you